Hey there, Navy Doc 5184 here. Thank you for stopping by. Today we are going to be reacting to the two part premiere of Star Wars The Acolyte. Really looking forward to this show. Uh, I've really done my best to really avoid anything like trailers. Well, I can't really say trailers. I did see a trailer, but I've really been avoiding a lot of, I guess, trying to get the story or get any behind the scenes or anything like that because I really kind of want everything to go fresh and really go in with a blind view of what's going on though I do know that it is set uh, I think it was like a hundred years or so before episode one so one thing well I should say two things I'm really looking forward to because when I did see the cast seeing that Carrie Ann Moss is in here so it's just like I mean matrix as trinity you know so really quite excited to see what they do with her in this one should be quite interesting and then um lee jung jay i think is how the name is pronounced and at first when i saw him i'm like i know i know him but i couldn't quite place where and then when i looked him up i'm like oh that's where you know from squid game so very interested uh, to see how he does with this and one thing i did see while, while trying to really avoid anything about the show seeing that apparently he has a really love for star wars and love qui-gon jinn and that he actually went and learned english so he could do this which good lord i i don't care who you are and in all honesty like to have such dedication to want to play a role that you will learn a completely different language that is a whole nother level of dedication so really excited to see you know like where his character plays where carrie Ann moss's character plays in but definitely very excited to see what the story is because at first in my head i was thinking i'm like i wonder if that was the term of like the sith before they're known as the sith but then again if i recall in episode one i think they'd said that you know it'd been like millennia since uh you know the sith had been around so obviously the sith have been around at this point so maybe an acolyte is something different i don't know maybe it's something that will be explained as the story goes along so uh one thing i will say usually especially i do know that this is uh from what i understand eight an eight episode uh series um i don't expect you know everything to be explained in episodes one and two and usually episodes one and two um you know the way i usually feel on there is where things kind of start to get really set up and then maybe like episode three is where things really kind of start to pick up so we'll see what route they go uh with this i just i'm just very excited to finally get to the show so uh we shall go ahead and get started if you're interested in watching this yourself if you haven't already it is available on disney plus uh, as well as any other star wars that you would like to see so Let's go ahead and get this thing started. Hey there, thanks for stopping by and I appreciate you being here. If you enjoy the content and would like to give some extra support to the channel, feel free to check the description for various ways to do so. Some which will include an affiliate link to Dubby, uh, which you use, you get a 10% off your order. And also a link to my merch store, which is constantly running promotions and deals, as well as a link to my Patreon page, which you can get exclusive perks and content. Naturally, liking the video and leaving a comment helps as well. Thanks again and enjoy the video. That's already sound like some bad's about to happen. All right, here we go. All right, so 100 years before the rise of the Empire, it was a time of peace. Jedi Order and the Galactic Republic had prospered for centuries without war. But in the dark corners of the galaxy, a powerful few learned to use the Force in secret. One of them, a lone assassin, risked discovery to seek revenge. Well, this already sounds bad. All right, let's see what. Oh, Where's your Jedi? I wonder why she referred it to your Jedi. Are there like Jedi like post around the galaxy or something like that? I mean, I guess that would make sense if they're known as. Peacekeepers, per se, but... Master Indora. Oh, there she is. We have unfinished business. Attack me. 
with all your strength. I have no quarrel with you. Attack me, Jedi. Jedi do not attack the unarmed. Yes, you do. Okay, that's curious. Oh, oh. Is that really necessary? Oh! I think I see what happened there. <laughs> Yo! Okay, not gonna lie, this almost feels like a Matrix Star Wars, <laughs> the way they just did that scene right there. This literally does look like, like if you were to envision Trinity as a Jedi, this is what it would look like. Dude, this literally does look like Matrix-style choreography, does it not? I'm not gonna lie, I'm digging this fight choreography a lot. What are you doing here? I'm here to kill you. <laughs> Okay, so if I had to guess, she was a former Padawan, which explains how she's able to use the Force. Oh, jeez. There we go! <laughs> Trinity with a lightsaber. I like it. This is a fight that you will not win. A Jedi doesn't pull her weapon unless prepared to kill. I don't like that. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh no, this is not good. There it is! Oh, right in the heart. Oh. How are you gonna do her like that? She was like the one person I was most excited to see. You kill her off in the first, like, ten minutes? Granted, it really makes you want to know what the story is. So I'm sure it's not the last time we'll see her, but... Really, what's the story? Okay! A lot of questions, but natural for her first episode. Where is she now? Her hair looks a little shorter. Is this like a... Good morning, Pip. Okay, is this like a flashback or something? Sounds like we got a job. <laughs> is this before or after she killed Trinity? I guess her name is Indara, but... I'm probably gonna forever call her Trinity. Trade feds never use the shields. Maybe that's why they need it repaired. Okay, so is this just like a cover for her? And that was the pressure valve. I got it. Okay, that needs some explanation. Obviously, something with uh, fire does not bode well for her. What's this? Jedi. Uh, my name is Yord Fandar, Knight of the Jedi Order, and this is my Padawan, Tosi Loa. We are looking for a former Jedi by the name of Osha Anaseya. She's a mechnic. Why would we have mechnics here? The Republic has legislated that only droids may perform outer ship repair. Uh, uh. uh oh. Sub level, bunk 23. Thank you for your cooperation. <laughs> He's gonna get the info one way or another. What's going on, Yord? I think it's best you take a seat. So how long have you been a mechanic? Since I left the order, so six years. Not gonna lie, a little confused here. You lost your entire family. Your mothers, your sister, your village all died in the fire before Master Soul brought you into the Jedi. That explains her reaction to that fire. 
Last night, a Jedi was murdered on Ueda. Who? Master Indara. The suspect matched your description. You really think I'm capable of betraying the Order, overpowering a Jedi Master and murdering her? That's her! She killed the Jedi and ruined my bar! It doesn't matter what I think. You're making a mistake. Not gonna lie, really confused right now. I'm not gonna lie. There's a part of me that actually believes her, even though I literally saw her do it. But then again, what if the person who killed Indara was like a shapeshifter of some sort? Your eyes can deceive you. We must not trust them. That sounds familiar. Your eyes can deceive you. Don't trust them. What comes into your mind? I see fire. It grows larger. It consumes anything that tries to stop it. The force is powerful, like fire or the ocean. It is a power we must respect. But that is our lesson for another day. Time for lunch. I wonder what younglings eat for lunch. You and Master Indara were friends. I was sad to hear she came to a violent death. We have a suspect in custody. An old Padawan of yours. Osha Anasea. I see no reason for her to kill Indara. If it were to become public that a former Jedi killed one of our own. Our political enemies could use it against us. Discretion is important. Our justice swift. An example made. So, I'm not gonna lie. Already with this? You can already see the seeds for how the Jedi were so easily deceived by the Sith. It already getting to a point where they're talking about, like, political enemies and everything. Ugh. I have a feeling I'm not going to like the Jedi very much in this show. We're planning an escape. You win. Okay, uh, I applaud everyone's enthusiasm here, but that could kill us. So you'd rather leave your fate to the Jedi? Yes. I have faith in the Jedi. Uh, enjoy prison. <laughs> okay. A lot of questions right now. Now I'm really starting to believe she didn't kill Indara, so... If that's the case, who did? Oh, wow, they dropped him right into an asteroid field? Okay, I... Uh, who would have thought their plan would have actually worked? Okay, the fact that she's trying that hard, I actually do believe her now. I'm starting to think she actually did not kill Indara because we saw that the, that assassin had no issue using the force to get her knives and she can't even use the force to get Pip. Dude, Pip really is like a multi-tool of droids. Okay, so if this Osha did not kill Indar, then who was that assassin who looks exactly like her? I'd imagine it's gotta be a shapeshifter of some sort. That was a quick turn of events. Wow. Wow, he did you dirty. You went and saved him, and he done left you with no escape pods. Permission to speak freely, Master Zolk? You may. Why do you keep all the hollows of your former Padawan? This pastime encourages sentimentality and nostalgia, and both of these emotions can lead to- Our memories are lessons. If we don't meditate on the past, we're doomed to repeat it. How many times have we heard that in our lifetime? Prisoner mutiny. Transport went down over Karlak. Wow. Not among the survivors. I request permission to go to Karlak and bring Osha in myself. Small team. 
It is great. May the force be with you. All right, so I gotta say, I'm already feeling a little bit for Soul here. You can tell he's been dealing with a lot of weight on his shoulders that seems to be coming back here. I'm very curious to see why she decided to leave the order, though. Something must have happened. Because you can tell he's feeling a lot of guilt about whatever happened. So we're on a snow plant. Oh, okay, what was that? Uh, where'd you come from? And who are you? Hey! Okay? It's not what I would have planned for your first mission. I'm ready. And maybe so. But we need a backup. Is it Yod? What's wrong with Yod? Nothing. No, he's... <laughs> Yod. <laughs> Okay, I have a feeling that there's a story between those two. I thank you for choosing me for this mission. I should have brought Osha in myself. I apologize for my error. We leave in five minutes. I will redeem myself. <laughs> Yod, put your clothes on. <laughs> okay, clearly some sort of history I feel like there. Hello, Osha. May. Hello, sister. Uh. Okay. What in the world? Wait. So that's You're the fuck. With me? I'm with you. Always one, but born as two. Wait a minute. But no, they said that she died in the fire. Did you kill Indara? Yes. I will kill them all. Whoa, oh, okay. One question answered, but at least a good five more. <laughs> I think. So that explains, so obviously the assassin is not a shapeshifter. It is Osha's twin sister, whose name is May. So who trained May? Somebody's been training in May in the Force. How well do you know Osha? I was posted on her home planet, Brandok, when her sister started a fire that killed her entire family. She had a sister? Yes. She had a twin. Do you think that... No. May is dead. That was her name. May. I saw her die. So well, Jackie seemed to kind of piece it together real quick. But that doesn't make sense. He just said he saw her die. This is so confusing. Okay, so if everyone's so sure she's dead, saw her dead, then how did she survive? Well, then again, how many times have we seen uh, people who should have died survive just based on the idea of wanting revenge? There's no way she could have survived this. Clearly someone's been here, Yord. Scavengers, Padawan. Follow me. He does seem kind of full of himself, doesn't he? This Yord. Already, though, I'm not going to lie, I do kind of get a Qui-Gon Jinn vibe from Soul. Definitely seems, I guess you could say, very reliant on the Force and not so much. I don't know if I want to say by the book, but. Osha! So! I didn't do it! Step away from the edge! Believe me! I didn't! <gasps> Osha! You, you knew you were right on the edge! Why are you gonna back up? <laughs> Pip's probably really confused right now. May is alive. He has a very strong attack to her. I believe you. 
All right, so how are you going to convince the order? Well, you know, Yord and Jackie are probably confused. The Jedi live in a dream, but an acolyte, an acolyte kills without a weapon. An acolyte kills the dream. So that's how we end episode one. Okay. Okay. All right, y'all. That was episode one of Star Wars: The Acolyte, Lost, and Found, and like I said, it's like it, it feels like every time like a question gets answered, five more pops up, like one of those deals, you know. And it's kind of going the way I expected. It's kind of like like the first two episodes always feel like they're meant to really fill your head with the questions trying to you know to see where everything's going and all that good jazz and it definitely did that it definitely raised a lot of questions and i'm not gonna lie at first i almost felt i don't know if i want to say disappointed because it felt like that because at first uh before i realized osha and may were different people um, you know, when I thought, you know, she just went, goes, kills Indara, and the next thing we know, we see her on a ship, and I guess, uh, Mechnik is kind of like a, um, not a construction worker, but, you know, you kind of seen them, you know, like, even in, uh, Phantom Menace, you know, when the ships need repairs, you know, all the Astrodroids go out there and do it, so I guess they have, a uh, human folk that do that, but I guess it's not exactly, uh, I don't want to say respectable profession, but, uh, one that is uh, strongly discouraged, but either way, um, you know, and seeing that, and in my head, I'm just like, it was like, it was confusing at first, because I'm like, at first, I'm like, is this before or after? But then, you know, they set it up in a way where it almost sounded like, you know, she went, goes, kills Indara, and then hurries back to, you know, the ship. And in all honesty, it was just so weird how quick I was to believe her when she said she didn't do it. But at the same time, there was also a part of me in the back of my head where I was a little disappointed because I feel like a lot of shows and even movies nowadays try too hard to make a villain sympathetic. You know, they're like, oh, you know, well, here's their backstory. This is, you know, kind of like what they're like, you know, when they're not doing bad things. They kind of make you, you know, I guess they feel sorry for the villain where it's like, you know, sometimes I just wish shows could just get to the point where it's like, you know, let's just get away from trying to be completely realistic and just say, you know, there are just some people that are just flat out evil and it really doesn't matter what their backstory is. They're just bad people, you know? So I'm kind of glad they didn't fully go that route with that. I'm sure that, you know, with May, there probably will be something in there, you know, but it's probably in a way, I guess you say a case of Vader where it's just, she, you know, she was led to believe one thing and then, you know, probably, you know was raised and trained a certain way and maybe something will happen where she realized it's not quite or exactly the way she thought it was that's already kind of the vibe i'm feeling like with this because i mean i don't know if may knows that osha is alive or not um obviously osha thought may was dead and just found out that they were alive soul obviously thought that may was dead and I don't know. See, I, I what I'm curious about is unless something happens while Osha's in their custody, I don't see how the Jedi Council is going to believe Saul because already, like I said earlier, it feels like you're already getting a sense of what it was that I guess you could say started really the downfall of the Jedi where what's the one thing like that one Jedi was her name? I just remember it started with a V. But it was like she really didn't care about anything else about how it was gonna look to their political enemies whereas at least soul is still trying to figure out the truth of it whereas the other one was like look our enemies are gonna look at it like this we have to you know hurry up and make an example out of this you know just and that is such and i think that's again where soul um that where the actor uh lee Oh, geez, I already forgot his name. Ling Sung Jae, or... God, I hope I pronounced his name right. Uh, I was talking about how he loved Qui-Gon Jinn so much. 
that by itself almost gives me a strong Qui-Gon Jinn feel where Qui-Gon wasn't exactly by the book and straight black and white. He wanted to take the time to find the full truth of everything. You know, even if it was something that really kind of went against the Jedi. And you can already see, like, I already feel like it's going to be a pretty contentious relationship between Soul, um, you know, against, uh, well, I don't know about Jackie. I, I, I'm really kind of curious about Jackie. Your definitely seems like he's going to be straight by the book. So, I mean, considering that he's a knight, you know, and it's probably, uh, you know, I, I guess like space police in a way, you know, he's probably going to be really black and white. So I would imagine him and Soul are going to clash a lot, which honestly really kind of makes me worried a little bit because I really hope that uh, Yor doesn't, you know, feel himself so much that he kind of, you know, falls to doing evil himself. But we'll have to wait and see. Like I said, there's so much going on with this in just one episode that I haven't even gotten to the whole idea of whether I liked it or not. And I have to say for what it is, yes, I did. I never, like with new series, I never expect much in like the first, like I said, usually with the eight episode ones, you know, the first two for me are just kind of like setting the foundations and everything. So I don't really expect much, though I will say I really enjoyed like the very beginning of that. I wasn't expecting to pretty much start off with a fight. Usually, I will say, I think this is probably the fastest paced first episode I've seen in a lot. Well, I can't really say a lot of the Star Wars stuff on there because I think the only other show I've watched besides, uh, you know, Ahsoka and Clone. Well, no, Ahsoka had a pretty fast paced start too, so. But I just like the fact how it just kind of like went straight into a fight. Love the fight choreography. It honestly just felt like watching a Matrix movie in the Star Wars universe. But it helps when you have Carrie Ann Moss in that. You know, so it's like it fit her so well. I am very salty that she died so quick in the series, though. You know, I mean, it, it felt like she was so heavily um, hyped or promoted, you know, for the show. I felt like she would have had a bigger role. But then again, again... Just the first episode, I would imagine they'll probably have some flashbacks to, you know, really show her character. Maybe see, really, what is the story? Because the way uh, May was talking about how they have unfinished business, was insistent that the Jedi will, you know, fight or draw their weapons against unarmed folks. It's just like something had to have happened that she really wanted i have a feeling soul is going to be a target because soul and indara apparently saved osha so if she's mad at indara or if may is mad at indara she's got to be mad at soul so i'm sure he's going to be a target at some point but you know i don't know when that will happen maybe it'll be next episode we'll have to wait and see but again the main thing i'm looking forward to now is what is going to happen with osha and you know what is soul gonna do to try to convince him that she didn't do it because apparently now we know that she probably you know that she didn't do it but really anybody you know outside of you know a rare few are gonna really believe that but whew, man i gotta say definitely a fast you know nice nice pace really appreciated the pace you know really enjoyed the fight choreography as i said and uh for what i expected with the first episode i think you know it didn't you know, go below them. You know, I wasn't expecting anything huge right off the bat. Like I said, my expectations for the first two are just to set the foundation. Episode three is probably where things are really going to start picking up. So, uh, but all that being said, uh, we are good to go with episode one. Uh, we are going to now go into episode two titled Revenge Justice. And let's go ahead and get started with that one. Oh my bae, come on. <laughs> Uh, okay, what is, oh, I see. Master Torben, we have unfinished business. Attack me with all your strength. He doesn't even look like he knows you're there right now. That is a dude who's seriously at peace in the force right now. <laughs> mm. 
Wow. Okay, if he's that at peace where he can't even be hurt by knives or anything, how have we not heard of him before? And what is he to her? I'm starting to feel like there's a lot more to this than I thought. Hey, Padawan. You could try repolarizing the power couplings. Thanks. You must be a pilot then. No, I'm a mechanic. Wow. That's dangerous. That's an interesting dynamic. Current Padawan and former Padawan together. I don't think that's ever anything I've ever seen before. Her name is May, but I believe she is responsible for Indara's murder. I'm inclined to agree. A suspect matching Osha's description broke into a local Jedi temple. Where? Omega. She could hardly be in your custody and committing another crime at the same time. Ooh, that was a very much needed break. If, if anything, at least now they know Osha is innocent. So you got that problem solved, but now we got to figure out what the heck, what is May's issue with all these Jedi? Torbin is not the serene and, as you say, impenetrable meditator. What he really needs is something only you can give him. Okay, which is what? Absolution. It wouldn't bode well for either of us if you told him about this. Of course. Okay, so who is him? Master? Very confuzzled. And I have made peace with what happened on Brandog. I know you have. But? That was a lesson you tried to teach me many times. And I wasn't a very good student. Perhaps I wasn't a very good teacher good old teacher's guild isn't it i know why you took the mirage down you thought this life would give you the peace you seek the mirage vow what is that but your past still haunts you i offer you a choice what is going on confess your crime to the jedi council what crime or receive the forgiveness you seek. Right here, right now, from me. What is going on? I've been waiting for you, mate. So, oh, oh what? So he knows that's May. Did Indara know? Oh no. We thought we were doing the right thing. Torben, no, 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 no. So quickly, she's two for two. Osha's gonna go in, he's gonna be dead. They're gonna find her and think she did it. Oh no. oh no! Okay, I really need to know what happened now. And why didn't Osha at least say something instead of just breaking off? Maybe start explaining. Yeah, very quickly. How do you know? She didn't do it. My sights were on her the entire time. I followed her when she broke off. Whew, thank you, Yord. <laughs> this is Bunta from my home planet. Is this the only apothecary in town? It is, but that's not our regular guy. I don't know who that guy is. We can send her in. She can talk to him. We can record and monitor the conversation. That way, we have a lead on May, plus we also get a confession from him. Solid plan. It is a very solid plan. Alrighty then. Okay, maybe we can finally start getting some answers. Hello. <sighs> oh boy. That's the thing, she doesn't know how they communicate. Uh, are you okay? Did the poison work? 
That's it. That's all we need. Just pull her up. Wait. I'm with Yord on this one. You killed Torben without the poison. He will be so pleased. Go. You look exactly like her. Whoa, 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 wait. Hold on. Back away. Okay. Where's May? Hold on, hold on. We know you supplied May with the poison that killed Master Torben. We have your confession. If you cooperate, we will consider letting you go with a warning. Definitely a Qui-Gon Jinn way of doing things. If you want to get to her, she'll be back here tonight. I'm holding some things for her. Yord, secure the perimeter. Keep an eye out for May. Jackie, get to the ship. Okay, now what? Who are the other two Jedi? I see one of them, which actually is very intriguing. A Jedi Wookiee? I can't wait to see that. Any sign of me? Not yet. I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> you can't have a Star Wars without that line. It's impossible. It's like the Star Wars line. I do not need your permission to go out there and confront her. I deserve justice. You want revenge. Look what revenge has done to your sister. I couldn't save her when you were children. Let me try now. Y'all, that's pretty deep. That is pretty deep. She wants to kill four Jedi. Indara, Torben, Kelnaka, and you. Have faith in me. Then have faith in me. All right, y'all, that, that last bit. Like the past couple minutes, that was pretty deep. And I think that's something a lot of people really kind of unfortunately mix together the idea of revenge and justice. They're not the same. I'll get into that later. Hey. You survived. She didn't give her usual speech. Is it because he went to her and not the other way around? Or is there something very special with him that she really wants him dead? You attack me without a weapon. Why? Yes, really, that's something I want to know. I'm really liking this fight choreography. I'm getting such a strong Matrix vibe with it. <laughs> wow! <laughs> My man! Okay, I'm liking Saul. I'm not gonna lie. I'm liking this guy. I see your master has taken great pains to hide his identity. Even from you. Is this mine? Is he mine, Probiner? Even if you wanted to. Get out of my head, Jedi. Your thoughts still go to your sister. My sister is dead! Osha is alive. Oh, ho, 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 ho. that changes things, doesn't it? In the name of the Galactic Son of the Republic, you are under arrest. Lay your weapons down and surrender. I don't think she has any more weapons anymore. May. <laughs> Definitely got this stealth thing down. Ooh. Oh, no, no. Dude, 
Dude. There's no way that she just simply missed. She did that on purpose. Ugh. We don't have time for talks, Master Balestra. We need to strategize. But we know where she's going next. We must we move. We don't make decisions like this without meaningful discussion, Soul. What's the issue? You know where she's going. What's the issue? You have your discussions on Coruscant and relay them to him while he goes to save Wookiee Jedi. I can get us out of this city. And go where? Kofar. Where the Wookiee Jedi lives. You found Kelmaka? So far, okay, so not on the Wookiee home planet. We have a Wookiee Jedi. Question is, does this Wookiee speak like humans or like normal Wookiee? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. A Wookiee Jedi. Who would have thought you'd see the day? Oh, man. That's where episode two ends. Holy cow, y'all. All right, y'all. That was episode two of Star Wars The Acolyte Revenge and Justice. And I actually really enjoyed that episode. I didn't feel like, I, well, I can't even say, it felt like it was about the same amount of action as in the first one. Again, I always expect it to be low in the first two episodes and just try to get the things uh, explained uh, already. And this was something I even talked about in the, my uh, review of the last episode was, what was it that May knew? And her interaction with Saul and her talking about Osha being dead, she thought her sister was dead. So both sisters thought the other was dead. And this is the first time since I fired that any of them have seen each other. And you can really see the impact it had on both of them, really. And oh man, I just, I'm really curious because in all honesty, there's no way, unless it can be proved otherwise later on in the series, that um, Osha just simply missed her shots on Osha, I, or on May, I mean. I think Osha missed those on purpose, but made it look like she was trying to get her. I think Soul probably knows better. And already, I gotta say, Soul in just these first two episodes is already kind of becoming one of my favorite Jedi. Not in the fact of what I've seen from him, even though I do like the idea of seeing a uh, Jedi using martial arts in terms of fighting. That's actually a very fun aspect of the show so far is the idea of having the martial arts in there. But it makes sense to me. You would feel like that Jedi would probably study that kind of thing, that they wouldn't just solely battle with lightsabers, that they would have some sort of hand-to-hand -hand, uh, combat training. So it makes sense to me, at least. But I really like the fact because if you've seen any of my Star Wars that reactions, actually most of them are probably going to be in my re-uploads of Ahsoka and the Clone Wars coming up, but um, I feel like at some point I've probably mentioned that Qui-Gon Jinn is my favorite of all the Jedi, and it's because I feel like he has a more total view of everything, whereas the Jedi themselves while I feel are definitely on the right side when it comes to the force and everything, at the same time, they're just so narrow viewed. But the beauty about Qui-Gon Jinn is that a lot of the things that the Jedi really try to break away from and reject, Qui-Gon Jinn, I always felt like embraced those things, but he was had such strong faith and I believe, you know, such a strong relationship with the force that, you know, it wouldn't have hurt him. And that's why really he would have been the perfect teacher for Anakin because all the emotions and all the feelings that Anakin was dealing with, Qui-Gon is probably the only Jedi at that time that would have been able to help Anakin through that. Whereas Obi-Wan Kenobi was so, you know, by the book, just so, straight and narrow with the Jedi. I mean, you've seen how he butt heads with Qui-Gon Jinn. So 
While yes, you know, I'm sure he tried to be the best master he could to Anakin and even grew a close bond with him, but the things that Anakin really needed, only Qui-Gon Jinn could have provided. And that's because I believe Qui-Gon wasn't so focused on just sticking with the straight, narrow view of the Jedi. You know, he was able to embrace everything. His faith was completely in the Force. But, and I get that same feeling with Soul where he really, and he even talked about it, you know, when he was telling Osha to have faith in May and to have faith in him, you know, that really kind of tells you where his mindset is. You know, it's like he will battle when he needs to, but I think he has a good full of understanding of what to do. And you can already see him starting to butt heads with the Jedi now, which is what I was fully expecting to happen the last time. Like, or actually, I think it was actually earlier in the second episode where, uh, um, uh, Valestra was telling him to go to Olega, you know, kind of surprised me, you know, how quickly she agreed to that. But now here they are, they're wanting to strategize and everything. And it's like, in my head, I'm like, why? You know where May is going to go. You know who the next target is. And now you know, and obviously you know that Sol himself is one of the targets. So there's really nothing to strategize. You know where to go. Do your plan in the course on everything and relay it to Soul. You know, I don't see why they have to go and have meaningful discussion when you know what her next plot is going to be. Now, granted, I'm not going to lie. I'm very curious on who May's master is. You know, the fact that she doesn't even really know, that really is... That's very interesting. I'm not going to lie. And I'm very curious to see what's going on with that. I definitely want to know the full story of um that fire what is it and why does may want revenge so badly against those four jedi i mean she was talking to torben talking about the crime he committed but i'm like what what role did the jedi play in all that and i do like the fact that it kind of verified a thought i had about how back in the day where jedi were post or posted in certain areas because they're talking about how four jedi were posted on that planet when the fire happened but then the other thing that's confusing is Osha saying that May caused the fire, which is like, I don't know. There's so many questions that still have yet to be answered. And I have a feeling that starting on um, episode three, that's where a lot of the answers are gonna come. One of the things that I do wanna make sure I hit on though is something that I think I really enjoyed about this is this hit a very deep chord and something that I always feel very strongly about uh, in the idea of revenge versus justice because I mean you got Osha obviously you know she was talking about how she deserves justice which she's not wrong in that sentiment but Soul recognized that that wasn't exactly the path she was going she wanted revenge you know and he, he said it right there, look at what revenge did to your sister. And that's the whole thing is where people just get so idea of wanting justice. Sometimes for some people, it's just like the only way in their head they'll get justice is if, you know, said person, you know, hurts the way they did. And that in itself is not justice. I mean, in a way, you know, it's like, it's such a weird murky area and you know, and it's a reason why sometimes when I see like very bitter people who've gone through something and you just see them, you know, just go through these things where they're just like, you know, where they don't openly say it, but you understand, you know, they want the other people to hurt like they did or they just want, you know, it's just like, you know, they really just wish unhappiness to the person. It's one of those things like I completely understand said person hurt you really bad. You know, and that's like the only way you feel like you're going to get justice for it, you know, is if the other person suffers the way you did. But it's like when you go that road and really wish, you know, anything bad on a person, even if it's just as simple as that they live the rest of their lives unhappy or, you know, you just allow that bitterness to get that. That is where I think things kind of really take a dark turn and you know the whole idea of justice versus revenge revenge is not going to bring satisfaction 
you know, it's one of those things, it's kind of like a drug in a way, you know, it's like you kind of get that instant high, you kind of get that temporary relief, but then after you come down, you're back to feeling the way you were again, you know? So it's like after you get that revenge, it's like you get that initial satisfaction, but in terms of long-term healing and closure, you're not gonna really get that because think about it, you know, you got that, you know, you wish, you know, say you wish, you know, unhappiness, all that, and you see all this going down, it's like you might take that enjoyment, but at the same time, you're just like, it doesn't really fulfill you, and you just want more bad to happen, and it's just such a vicious cycle. That's just the way I see it. Granted, a lot of it probably has to do with my faith. Um, I know it's not something I talk about a whole lot on the channel, because there's not a whole lot of subject to go with it, but, um, you know, with my Christian beliefs and everything, you know, a lot of people would call it karma, um, you know, like I don't use that term in and of itself, but it's the same principle. It's the idea of, you know, you know, just don't take things into your hands. The problem is people are just so impatient for, I guess you could say, the justice to occur that sometimes they just want to take it in their own hands where sometimes you just, you got to let it unfold. You know, like in terms of my faith, it's like you got to let God, you know, handle the situation, you know, move on with your life, you know, and, you know, they say pray for your enemies. And, you know, and it's for me, it's like, you know, I'm not going to pray that, you know, they be prosperous or anything like that, but I'm not going to wish harm upon them. You know, I'm going to wish that, you know, they go on, they live their healthy lives and maybe whatever it is that, you know, caused them to hurt me, that's something that has changed with them. Does that mean I will probably, you know, make contact and be friends with them? Probably not, but that does, I don't need to. I just, you know, my whole idea of forgiving somebody is not so much going off and being buddy buddy for them. It's just my way of saying, look, you did this to me. I, I am moving on from this. And you no longer have power over me. Once I do that, what happens from there it takes many turns you know i think about my stepdad um i won't go into the full story of the relationship with my stepdad let's just say that um there was a lot of abuse involved with that relationship um not just on me but on my mom and brother as well but there was a point where it took me a very long time to really understand the whole idea of forgiveness because you know everybody you know like youth pastor and everybody would say you know that you know i need to forgive them and everything and i'm just like how because in my head i felt that forgiveness meant i had to be friends with them where finally i got the idea where it's just like you know i just have to just say look you know this was the situation this is what you did this is how you hurt me and i am no longer going to let this run my life you know i forgive you in the sense that i'm not gonna hate you anymore i'm not gonna you know speak ill on you i mean if people ask you know what happened i'm gonna tell the truth but i'm not gonna speak ill on you i'm not gonna wish ill on you i'm gonna move on with my life thankfully we did actually reconnect and we did reconcile um unfortunately he did pass away a few years ago but it was nice that I was able to really get like full closure, you know, cause we did reconcile, you know, and one of the things with him is when I really looked at the full picture and kind of looked, you know, past my anger, he was really a good guy. What went, what was his downfall was he was an alcoholic. And that was when he got bad was when he drank, when he didn't drink, there's nothing bad I could really say about him. But because of all the pain and anger, all I did was speak bad on him because all I did was remember all the bad. But when I really layered everything back and realized, you know, he obviously had his own demons. Unfortunately, he just chose the wrong way to take him out. Uh, when I reconnected with him, he had actually quit drinking. He had been sober for many years. So, you know, it was nice to have that reconciliation. But when you got people who are just so focused on revenge, their only issue is they feel the only way other person can, you know, be, I guess, just can be done is if other person is hurt themselves. But that man, that went to a whole different philosophical thing. I think that's why I really appreciated that message, though, because I think about, 
you know, lots of moments where, you know, I really had to understand the difference between revenge and justice, but, whew, man, I wasn't expecting to get all philosophical on that, but, <laughs> uh, but I will say this for issues like that. I know I brought it up one time. I actually am um, creating another YouTube channel to discuss my uh, faith a little more. If you're actually interested in um, checking out that channel, I haven't posted anything on there yet. I'm still uh, focusing on getting everything set up, but I'm really hoping that this month to really start to post on there. But if that's something you're interested in watching, uh, where it's just me talking about my faith, just let me know in the comments and I'll leave you a link to the, um, that channel. But in the meantime i think i'm just gonna go ahead and cut it there that was again another good episode i love the philosophy they threw in there and uh i really look forward to episode three uh picking up on the action so it should be really good there but uh until then feel free to check out some of my other uh star wars episodes reactions whether it's ahsoka um actually yes i do have ahsoka on there tales of the jedi or anything else and uh thank you all for stopping by and i'll catch y'all down the road